today I have some very interesting things to show you here. Yes, these two gorgeous things I managed to get hold of. Those of you who already know uh, about the Sidbox project and have seen updates here and there will have noticed one of these lying around my retro, <laughs> my retro corner. And yeah, very proudly because this is my favorite spectrum. Uh, but yes, first another thing to show you that you may have already noticed. As you can see, I have upgraded my workbench here. I have so much space, all the space. Look at it. Now today I present to you two original Sinclair 128K Spectrums, nicknamed the Toast Rack for this reason. <laughs> I mean, these are hardly the common type, they're in fact quite uncommon, and when you do find them, they end up being quite expensive and you know, so forth. But uh, yeah, I have been looking for a toast rack for it must be like two years now, but I've been wanting one for quite a while, uh, quite many years actually, uh, because it's a special kind of spectrum. It's, uh, you know, just before, you know, they went from Sinclair to actually the QL and then, you know, they went to Amstrad, so this was kind of the last spectrum <laughs> before the switch, which was, you know, anyway. Now I still have the original Spectrum, which we always had, the gorgeous cute little rubber keys. Now this I have not given up on. I know some of you have seen my past videos where I attempted to repair this and I was wondering what was going on. A lot of the other projects just kind of like, you know, presented themselves to me and I ended up getting caught up in them. So that is still yet to come, the repair to that, so yeah, don't worry, <laughs> I've had a few people tell me. So after two long years of longing for a toast rack, two presented themselves to me at once. <laughs> and uh, one of them was from a viewer of mine and a Commodore collector, Retro Django, who decided to donate one to me, thank you so much. And uh, the other, just at the same time, just afterwards, uh, when I received this one, I saw this one on eBay and I was just like, okay, this is an unbelievable price, I'm gonna bid on it, and I won the bid. So of course I'm gonna recap and restore, uh, you know, the membranes, the capacitors, everything uh, on both of them and of course present that and show that too. And uh, yeah, one is gonna go to my friend Retrohawk who's been wanting one for ages also and the other one is gonna be all oh, mine. <laughs> okay, now I have to mention one thing. I am not into the, you know, the politics and the war between the computers and the political side of anything really. I am actually just fascinated by vintage computers in general. And uh, yes, of course I have my favorites, my Amiga is my ultimate favorite. <laughs> and the Commodore 64 of course after that, but then after that all of them. And you know, just because I have favorites doesn't mean that I do not appreciate others. I think both is possible and yes. That's just me and my outlook on this. I mean, I'm fascinated by the spectrums. I will not hide that fact. I will admit it proudly and just as much as I'm fascinated by the Atari 800. Now, along with this spectrum come the usual accessories, well, the usual required accessories like um, the power brick. I mean, you won't get far with that. It's a linear one. Actually, this one is for the plus two. Now, other than the 48K, which we initially had, we had a plus two for a short while and uh, that was replaced, as in, you know, they took that back and we ended up with an Amiga 500, which I think was an amazing decision. Now, with regards to video output, the common thing that was used back then was the RF, which, yeah, we're not, I don't even want to bother with that. That just, just does not exist for me. <laughs> then, of course, you have the RGB here and you have the expansion port here, which, you know, can be for extra RAM or can be for uh, things like the Kempston joystick interface. Here, you know, this thing does not have its own joystick ports built in, nowhere to be seen. This actually, this is actually for, you know, the uh, the numerical keypad, which was available, it's gonna dust in it, which was available in Spain, a standard. So on this side, you have your RS232, which I believe also you can connect a MIDI interface to. You have your ear and your make ports for your tape recorder. And uh, yeah, that's for data input and output and you have a reset button here which you know I'm glad they thought of that but still they have not thought of a power button which kind of so confuses me because 
you know, with the spectrum, you plug it into the wall and it's on. That is just... yeah. Now the only way to get a joystick port on this is to actually get a Kempston joystick adapter which attaches to the expansion port there and you can use your normal Atari DB9 joysticks there. Now the reason this does not have any joystick ports built in is because this is actually not supposed to be a game machine. It's not. It was never built to be a games machine. Clive Sinclair actually hated the fact that this was, you know, a lot of people programmed games on this. This became big in the gaming scene. And, uh, you know, it was, he really strictly wanted it for business and education purposes only, like a proper PC would be. And, uh, yeah, he really hated that. But, um, yeah, now for something that does not have any hardware scrolling, hardware sprites, or anything like this, I find it amazing that it's got such a huge games library. And, you know, a lot of skilled programmers worked around all this and still made, you know, <laughs> quite some classic games on this, which is fantastic. And I think it's safe to say that that is what makes this quite an interesting, unique and revolutionary computer system. Now let's go through just what we have for these beauties, but first thing I have to say that actually amuses me very much is the fact that it comes with a tiny touch and go typing tutor <laughs> package. I mean, yeah, this makes me laugh because the the Spectrum is known for not having the best keyboard. I mean, it's I'm a very fast typist, and yeah, this is not the best. And this really makes me laugh. I mean, really makes me laugh when I think about this. <laughs> the keyboard on this, as cute as this looks, the keyboard is freaking awful, and I don't think. If anyone can, oh, there's no even space bar here. You know, space bar is here, so you have to kind of have an extra little finger to do that. Unless you're very flexible like I am and can do this and train yourself to this. I mean, I'm ambidextrous, so yeah, it kind of helps. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is hardly a touch typist keyboard. So yeah, I mean, at least the later ones decided to put a space bar there. Now, I know this means well with its tiny touch and go typing tutor, but no, I'm not gonna torture myself. So, I ordered a capacitor kit, well, two capacitor kits uh, from Spain. Uh, that's the only place I could find them on eBay at the time. And yeah, I ordered one for mine, one for Retrohogs. Now, the one which I bought from eBay, the membrane has, I mean, it's worked at first, but now it's completely dead with just two uses. And uh, this one here is actually, you know, this, the, a few keys here are starting to not work. So yeah, it's, it's, it's on its way out. So I decided to get myself and my friend two membranes here. Now these have been created in 2018 apparently and I will link the eBay description, sorry, eBay link in the description below. Now these, they seem very sturdy and I will definitely of course be installing both of them, replacing both of them hopefully with success. Now then, let's get started on this shall we? Let's open this out first. In fact, before we do this, let's get the anti-static mat out already connected to earth. Let's earth myself. As well as the spectrum itself once I've opened it. So we're all on the same plane. Okay, let's be gentle here. Let's Undo the ribbon cables gently, even though this is going to be replaced, but still, it's good practice, isn't it? Now, first things first, ground plane. So let's just stick this, put this onto the RF modulator. Should be, you know, we're on the same plane now. <laughs> Eeks. I don't like the look of that. Now already there is an EEPROM chip which is exposed. I'm not comfortable with this. So, until we find a sticker for that. 
<laughs> I know it takes a while for it to do that, but still I don't want to risk anything. So okay, the darkest sticker there. And let's double it. Now here we have the Xilog Z80 processor, we have the uh, the ULA here, the ULA chip, and we have the 128k memory here, <laughs> all arranged in a long bank. First thing which I want to do is actually replace these capacitors, so this motherboard is going to come out, and actually I may remove this. We have a familiar friend here, uh, the 7805 or 78 series voltage regulator, and this thing is a freaking hothead. <laughs> You know, it gets really hot and this is why this heatsink is there. It is just for this little thing. So now that we have removed the uh, toast track itself, we now have a 48k plus. <laughs> just kidding. This is well, more or less aesthetically yes, that's all it was. Except, you know, minus the toast track. And of course, we have here the AY chip, which is one of the main reasons why I love the Spectrum 128K. The sound chip here, which sounds actually pretty decent. So we have the AY chip mixed in with the standard CPU uh, sounds of the Spectrum, which you'll be familiar with on 48K. And yeah, both together, that used for sound effects, this used for music, it sounds really nice. I guess so, uh, it's just take this out now. Oh dear, reset button. Un momento, por favor. There we go. So we can now put this aside for a much needed freaking clean. Ugh. Now then, this needs dusting. I'm gonna get some isopropyl alcohol and a little bit of a wipe and just wipe this clean before I start working on it. Oh dear, what does it say about me if I'm struggling with the freaking child look? <laughs> Now this is my fourth year on my channel where I am restoring and cleaning things. You know, I've been doing it for quite a while. So yeah, I do have respect for the computers that I restore, as always, because I just, I don't know, I, I'm really fascinated by things that are from the past, things that are from the 80s, memories that are long lost, but at the same time can be switched on, restored and switched on just like this. And renewed you know this is important to me I know that a lot of people think that this nostalgia and retro thing is a fad well it is a fad if you look at it uh, in a very shallow manner but if you're actually going into it with feeling if you're into it feeling and true intent then yeah it is you know you don't care about the fad you don't care about anything else you're doing it because you want to experience it. It's part of the experience, as life is. What the freak is going on here with this? This is a bit wonky. Why? Or if someone's replaced these three already, it seems. And also around this toroid here. Now, one thing I'm grateful for to this person is that when they replaced these uh, RAM chips, they actually socketed this. They made the effort to socket it, which makes it fantastic. If you have to replace it again, you can just pull it out the socket rather than desoldering the entire thing. Now, let's hope that I do not need to do this, uh, replace any of these in the future or anything like this. So, yeah, if I do, I will socket these two. Now, while I'm waiting for my desoldering pump to heat up, 
I will show you what else I bought for my Spectrum. Now earlier on I showed you this hot head here. It is a 7805 regulator. For those of you who do not know, a voltage regulator is a component which is designed to maintain a certain voltage. For example, this is a 7805, therefore the output voltage never goes above 5 volts, regardless of if you input 6 volts, 9 volts, or 12 volts, and so forth. Now the 7805, or rather the 78 series, is a linear regulator. Crudely explained, a linear regulator is based on resistance. More specifically, like a voltage divider configuration, but it behaves like a variable resistor, which depending on the input voltage adjusts to keep the output at 5 volts. Since it's based on resistance, it dissipates the voltage difference between the input and output as heat. And due to the ridiculous amount of heat that needs to be dissipated in these regulators, especially due to the voltage difference and current drawn in the Spectrum 128K, we then end up with a Toasty Toast Rack. This is responsible for <laughs> the name Toast Rack. Also, the 78 series regulators can provide maximum 1 amp, so it's a nice quick and easy way of creating a dual voltage power supply, as long as no more than 1 amp is drawn from the output of the regulator. If more than one amp is required, one can then easily add another regulator and double it, so long as the source voltage can provide, you know, two amps at least. Now, I do not plan to keep this dude in here, at least not in mine. Uh, I have bought a replacement for the 7805, and it's a direct replacement. Now, these little beauties are Traco Power TSR 1. 2450. These are switching regulators. Now, unlike the linear regulator, these actually work by switching. So you, the input voltage will be, uh, let's say, you know, 12 volts or however many volts, and it will keep switching, you know, to keep the voltage lower. So it'll, the speed or the rate of the switching will go up and down depending on the input voltage. So the output voltage stays, remains the same. It remains at, at five volts. Now these are directly replaceable with the 7805. The pinout is uh, voltage input, ground, and voltage output. Same here. Voltage in, ground, voltage out. So yeah, you can just directly replace these, which I'm very happy about. <laughs> now, as you noticed earlier on, I, you know, of course I disconnected this, this part here. Now, the red is the output, green is input. Now, this, of course, I'm not gonna, you know, put in here. What I'm gonna do is desolder these wires from the board and then stick one of these in here. Uh, the green is input, which is this side. The ground is the center, which is the white, which should be the black, but it's the white. Um, I'm finicky about these things. So <laughs> anyway, uh, that is the output, which is the red. So this will go in this way, facing outwards. So with the switching regulator, you will have a much cooler and more stable running spectrum. Now that is all for today, however, not all for this project. Be sure to stick around for part 2 next time, when I recap these spectrums and continue with restoration. Do subscribe for more and hit that bell icon for notifications. Do hit that thumbs up and share with your friends and contacts. Many thanks to my patrons for their generous donations. If you wish to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description below, as well as links to my patrons' websites or YouTube channels. Thank you so much for watching. And for now, I will say adios!